Hi everyone, it's Shell from Shell Shell Crochet. Welcome to my May 2024 crochet podcast. Let's talk whips and finished objects. Hi everyone, it's Shell. How are you today? I hope you're all doing well. Today is Thursday, May the 30th, end of May. Oh my goodness. With a little bit of luck, this podcast will be able to go up tomorrow, which is May 31st. I have the window and screen door open, so there may be some outdoor sounds, but the breeze is lovely. And let's get into it. We're gonna travel back in time. And the first thing I was really working on in May was the Bag of Day Shawl Along, which is here. I'm not gonna talk about it too much because there is a separate podcast that I was able to do mid month to talk all about that shawl. And thanks for everyone's feedback on whether I should try making it bigger or not. I did not. The only thing I added to it was just a very slight finishing edge on the raw edge um, using a like chain three slip stitch method across it a couple of times and so I still have quite a bit of that yarn left and it's tucked away uh, but it was a really fun make I'm glad that I persevered with it thanks for everyone's feedback on the vlog uh, it was great to hear from you all and um, I'm still looking to see other people's I saw Gary Shawl from Urban Yarns and uh, anyway please let me know if you've seen others and where to find them on YouTube because I would really like to see some more of them. And for those of you who didn't catch the vlog, it will be linked in the description box below. And there'll be just a few pictures of my um, shawl for you at the very end of this video. Okay, what was next? What did I work on at the very beginning of May other than the shawl? Let's check. Good morning, everybody. It's just about coffee time. And I thought I'd show you that I made a strap. All right, let's see if I can do this without wobbling the camera too much. Whee! So I opted to just make the strap. Um, I did get hubby to pull out some of the cotton for me. He found it fairly easily in all the storage. And what I did was just did a double stranded chain long enough that I liked the length of it. Came back across that chain <coughs> with a single crochet round, that's what the middle is. And then on the edging, I just did single crochet chain one in every single stitch with single strand of yarn and a smaller hook. And it's a nice long strap, so if someone wanted to wear it crossbody, they could. If it was too long, you can just tie a knot in it up at the top because it's small enough for that. And I just secured it really nicely on the inside. And we'll call that granny square bag a finished object for May the 6th. 2024. Uh, oh yeah, I've done some more bags. Hang on a sec. So Jada and Stitches is starting a wall hanging cal, uh, crochet along this week and I didn't really want a wall hanging. So I thought, do I have the colors that I could just make a small bag? And I do. Let me throw this granny square down beside it so you can see the frame of reference. So that's a six inch granny. So it'll be a nice little bag, a little bit smaller than the one you just saw. So seven colors of scrap cotton went into that. Single crochet, mostly uh, four weight cottons. The Mary Maxim one in there, it's a light, light four weight maybe. It's an old one that they've gotten rid of over the years. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to have some fun putting a few uh, summery creatures and flowers on there and then a strap. I think I'm going to bring the teal back in for the strap, which is that color right there. So here's the strap. Nice and long. And this is the original granny square bag I made last time. You can barely even tell it's a granny square. It's navy blue and uh, nice and lightweight will be an excellent crossbody bag for someone who wants it. So after I made the strap on that bag, I made this bag. It has a double stranded, it's a double stranded bag entirely, but the base of the bag is single crochet, so it's nice and sturdy. And then I did some post stitches here in single crochet to bring it out and uh, have it kind of curve up on its own naturally. And then I just did some double crochets. So this is kind of like a mesh market bag vibe, but it's double stranded. And I used the teal yarn that I have so much of um, from a big cone I got from Spin Right I've talked about before. Um, and I held it double with scraps. One of the scraps was a Bernard Handicrafter Stripey and it had um, some aqua and 
pink and purple in it and then I had some more aqua just on its own so that's this one that's popping up really bright on the screen it's not quite as bright in person but I think it turned out pretty well and it would be great for like produce or something like that uh, if you want to use a purse organizer you could also use it as a purse I put a little button on the front like I did on the other one um, so that that can grab it especially when uh, there's something in it so what I did just now is I stuck a skein of yarn in the bottom to give you an idea I just did double crochets in between the stitches and when it came up to this part I switched to half doubles to make it a little more sturdy at the top and that was it. I was just sitting here at the beginning of May and I was like, what am I gonna make? And I just grabbed scraps and started working on a bag. <laughs> Let's finish up the bags. If there's any more clips about bags, here they come. This guy hasn't progressed too far yet. I double stranded the very bottom of the bag for a little extra support, which is navy blue and teal. And then I pulled it out and I started doing some double crochets in between the stitches. And then this is in the scrubby smoothie cotton. So it's a, a very um, soft cotton compared to regular dishcloth cotton. And that is the teal in the dishcloth cotton. And I'm just gonna continue to add colors to that. I was thinking I might go into the blues and the greens that I have over here next. We'll see. Uh, or I may just continue striping it. I'm gonna see how I feel as I start working on it. And let me put that square back. So you can see we're uh, quite substantially bigger on that bag. So that'll be a nice meshy market tote. So this is the last of the cotton that I hadn't shown um, in person yet. It's just a small uh, striped bag. I ended up striping it. So you got the navy blue at the bottom. And what I was doing was double crochets in between the stitches and then uh, two double crochets, skip one, two double crochets, and then double crochets in between the stitches. So same pattern. And then at the top, I like to pull them in slightly and give them a little bit of shaping. You can do that by changing our hook size. You can take a couple stitches out on the ends and then also reduce the size of the stitch you're using. So I'm using half doubles and then singles. Put a little button and a string to hold the button. Um, and what did I do here? Same thing. So started off with a chain um, and single crochet with two strands of yarn. You can see it's marled and then came back around with just single crochet um, on this one. I didn't bother doing the extra chain with those stitches. Happy with this one too, it's cute. And where's the granny squares gone? Let's put one beside. You can get an idea of how big she is. Oopsie, it's a nice size. Okay, I finished off the granny square bag from last time. Uh, picking up from where we left off last time, there's the square that I invented. And this is one side of the bag and this is the other and I just did a little bit of shaping at the top to pull it in slightly uh, oh, I was gonna put the yarn in this too so you can see what it looks like with something in it let's put the big one in I'll do the button back up there so just having it weighted down you see it instantly kind of gets some shaping which is cool and again, I'm not lining my bags right now, so purse organizers work great for something like this. And the strap for this one is still a work in progress. See how it's all twisted? It's actually not twisted at all, but I have these D-rings here at the bottom. So I decided to attach the strap to those, but D-rings swivel. One sec. I'm just gonna take one side off for a sec for you. So it's great to have the hardware, but D-rings swivel. So that means the bag is constantly moving around and I don't know if I like that. So what I haven't had a chance to do yet is I was talking about that leather strap. I still haven't figured out where I put it, but I know it's somewhere. I just have to go looking for what in one of my safe places. <laughs> um, I'm going to compare the hardware on that strap to this to see the difference. There's no, it would, it wouldn't be very difficult for me to take this off and then attach the strap. I could do that. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm just not so sure how practical it is for it to always be spinning around because it's making the strap twist all the time. I don't know if it matters or not, uh, but that's what's happening anyway. So on the inside of the bag, I just put a few extra single crochets as a little chain so that I can grab onto like a thicker piece of, of uh, fabric for the, the hook to go through. And then it's like that. So I actually used some cotton in the strap, just in the middle section where it's marled. I had some variegated cotton that was kicking around. I think it's primarily like light pinks and purples, light pinks, dark pinks and purples. 
and uh, I thought it would go pretty well and so I held it with the black with the acrylic and then I just trimmed it in black and so in terms of how it looks together getting it all on camera I think it looks really good together um, but in terms of the, the strap twisting all the time I don't know if that's a problem or not and I don't know I think once it's on you it's probably fine anyway so this just needed a little bit of finishing it had a lot of ends unfortunately and they were black so I was trying to work on this one it was really bright out like it is right now um, and just some you know single crochets at the top to keep it nice and um, firm and so this is done and it will be put away and you don't have to hear about it anymore if you have any questions let me know so I did a poll recently, I'll pop up a picture here just to check in with you guys to find out what you're making in spring uh, of 2024. And here are the results. Um, I too have been making a lot of shawls. I too have been making a lot of bags. So far I've made one wearable for my mom and we'll get to that in a sec. And um, in terms of the spa sets, I make them all the time. I love working with my cotton and I do that just whenever the mood strikes me, for example, I found the tail end of some Hobby Lobby cotton that I had used to make a shawl with uh, two or three years ago. And I just finished up uh, a few different style coasters with it. And when I was done, I had about six and there was a tiny little bit left. So I used it to make um, a couple of things from my table that I actually mentioned in the vlog when I was talking about the shawl because they were blocking together. So let me grab those. Here's one, and you can see that this one has the Hobby Lobby cotton in the middle, and it's actually finished with a Karen Ripple cake in the similar um, Denmi pink tone. And here's the other one. Similar, a little more straightforward, and um, see how drapey though? And holding their shape great having been blocked with this shawl. So this cotton here came from uh, a top I used to have. Uh, I used to have it because I frogged the whole thing. So I originally made a tank top, wasn't wearing it as a tank top. Uh, I added sleeves, wasn't wearing it with the sleeves. So we'll see next time if it becomes something I actually get use of. I'm gonna go for like a little shrug of some sort and I'm still mulling around how to um, put that together. But uh, the inspiration to try got intensified by the fact of how drapey this seems after a little blocking. So we will see if that can be accomplished sooner rather than later. So the other spa sets I made, I'll pop up a picture here. Um, I started to date some of the pictures I make in my collage program, just so that I would know when I actually finished the items. But I was making a spa set for my mom to go along with her Cardi for Mother's Day. And because that green, uh, sage green, nice sage, light sage green yarn I was using is almost gone. I offered her if she wanted anything else made after she got her gifts and she chose a pump soap cover. So I made one of those for her too. And that's at her house. So I don't even have a picture of that. If I have a picture of a different one I've made, I'll just put it on the screen so you can see what it is. Um, and then I think the last sort of littles with cotton happened, um, or got inspired by, um, what I was working on in the car while we were away. So let's pop up that clip right now of some car crochet. Hey everyone, it's car crochet time. And I think I'm settling on this one right now while we sit and chat. Um, we like to take a little time off uh, where there is a holiday in the week if possible, because it means one less vacation day to book. And so it was the holiday Monday for Victoria Day for us here in Ontario, Canada. I'm just picking my hook here on Monday the 20th. So we have a couple of days away and we are visiting Blue Mountain. But we just came back from a nice lunch. Now Chris is inside Walmart. He's gonna scoop out some yarn for me while he's in there. And I'm gonna make myself a dishcloth. One, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. That'll do. Um, I am using these hooks that are in my car crochet kit. And I'm gonna do lemon peel, nice and easy. Um, so I was finally able to get the Cyber Leaf colorway. I will pop up a picture here. Um, I noticed it was in stock for the very first time about, I would say a week ago. Um, I ordered it on Wednesday and it arrived on Friday like it said it was going to, um, which was great um, because we were gonna be 
not around this week, so I was glad that I got it before we left. Generally, my car crochet bag stays in the car. So my yarn bag that I brought on this trip has one of those skeins of um, um, Cyberleaf. It has one of the skeins of the Hyperviolet. And then it has uh, of the baby blanket because I'm really trying to get that baby blanket done. So today is Tuesday, May the 21st. So I still have a little bit of time before I have to make the video, 10 days-ish. And um, I brought white yarn so that if I do finish the baby blanket, I can put a nice border on it. The yarn for the baby blanket was a bag of Millen's and it must have come from Yarnspirations. I, I, the bag is long gone, the plastic bag. But um, I guess because it came from there, I just assumed it was four weight and it must be like a Bernat baby yarn or something like that. And um, I'm hoping maybe I'll finish that while we're away. Um, so today's Tuesday and we're leaving on Friday. Uh, I gotta make sure I do this right. I gotta do single, double, single, double, single, double. Um, and so I am in my mind planning out blankets with the grain square yarn. I am gonna be making my mom in this color here, a blanket for Christmas. Um, so I'm gonna be doing far less 12 days than I have the, the previous few years this year. But I am still doing one for my mom. But I'm gonna be trying to make a few more things to go in the 12 days than I have been. Um, so we'll see how that all works out. And one of those things is gonna be my mom's final gift will be this throw I'm planning. And I picked up a nice medium gray on the darker side of the grays um, to be the final row and the joining color for that. So I am uh, thinking that that will look really nice. Okay, so my phone has fallen down like four times already. All right, so one row down. The actual bumpy side's on my side right now. It's time to start using that yarn a little bit more than I have been. So I've made one blanket and one bag um, so far, but I have a lot of that yarn and I wanna use some more of it up. Um, so I'm going to try and think of like more gift situations for it because uh, I'm not able to buy that yarn on sale at the moment so I don't want to just only be using the yarn up for charity and part of the reason that I made the blanket I made I'll pop up a picture here of the blanket um, oh that seagull was close by um, part of the reason that I made the blanket in the style it is is so that I didn't have to use only the granny square yarn in it um, because like I said, it is expensive and I am uh, definitely operating on a budget. So I will uh, be thinking about that type of stuff when I have any gift giving to do, and especially with granny squares being as popular as they are right now. So um, a couple of my girlfriends might really like a, a granny square bag. So anyway, um, I thought I'd just spend a little time chit chatting with you as I get this dished cloth going and um, be able to do a little check-in. It is so warm here right now. Um, the, the temperatures are in the mid to high 20s and the feels like temperatures are in the very high 20s to low 30s even. Uh, we had that yesterday. We're gonna have it today, tomorrow, and then I think on Thursday it's gonna cool down a little bit and then by the weekend it'll be back to normal spring temperatures. We've never really been up this way when the weather's been as good as it is now. We visited twice before. Once was in April and it was pretty cool and gloomy and then once was in November and it was already getting to be cold and it's north of us uh, where we are now so it's they always get snow sooner here and colder temperatures a bit sooner here so um, it's really cool to see the Blue Mountain um, ski area with no snow at all and what I didn't notice before is how beautiful all of the um, trees and all of the nature stuff looks um, without any snow hiding at all. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm not gonna keep you any longer. I'm gonna keep working on my dishcloth while hubby's in the store, and I will send you on to what's next in the video. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. So here it is. I finished a dishcloth on the way home in the car. It was three quarters of the way done, and I just finished it up on the way home in the car. And the one thing I don't do while I'm sitting in the car is try to sew it in the end, so I just did that quickly here. I've made one scrubby to go with so far, and I'm gonna make one more. I think there's just enough of this cotton left to get one more out of it. I'll stick a bar of soap with it, and that'll be in the Make Ahead stash for when I need a gift or something. So I guess we could start talking about some squares, right? Because I was talking about that red heart all in one granny square in that video. 
So it was great to be able to just pack a whip and um, two skeins of the all-in-one granny square and have plenty of options to entertain me while I was away. So here is my favorite, the Cyber Leaf. So I've got five of these. <laughs> and I have five in the Hyper Violet as well that I made while we were away. Just whenever I just felt like not thinking for a bit. I always like to bring a skein of cotton as well. So the way that May fell, we waited about a week for the tutorial for Jada's um, Calendar Cal 2024 Magical Granny's Cupboard. I always wonder if I get that right, but it's something like that. Um, here is the May square. So basically it is the solid granny meets the regular granny and it turns out so nice and square. It's one of my favorite things about that square. And uh, there we go. I think I've said that before. I think last month's was pretty square as well. But this gave me an idea because of how it was working up. And it was, I'll pop up a picture here. Um, the bag that's behind me here started out as just me playing around with what other granny squares I could make using Red Heart All-in-One Granny Square. So I've made three different ones aside from the regular granny. I just got to make sure this bag is not stuck on my, it's not, yay, okay. This is what I was able to come up with. I have a solid granny square, a regular granny square, and then I have the circle start to regular, and then I have the uh, regular granny stitch with the solid that was the May square for the calendar cow. And I just made this little bag. So as I had said a while back, I picked up some loops and threads, uh, what do they call it, Soft Classic, which is their new, what they did with the Craft Smart yarn on super sale a while back and uh, I just tried to pick colors that I thought would go nicely with the different colors that are in the all-in-one granny square yarn so I did a solid back for this bag nice big granny square there with some half double crochets around the edges and then this one had gotten single crochets all the way around them before I joined them and then there we are yeah I put a little button on the front there with just a little um, chain. I like to put the chain on the inside of the other side of the bag. So just so you can have it closed and not have to worry about anything um, falling through. But there's so many choices you could have had with a, for a complementary color for this yarn. And I just chose something that's not quite in it, but is sort of represented in one of the colors. So. I'm quite happy with that and I'm quite happy with the idea of what else to do with Red Heart All One Granny Squares. I just worked on these patterns on my own. Like I said, the Jada Square inspired me to try and I think the circle one may maybe gave me the most trouble, but I just tried to match up the amount of color I had. Uh, you have a rough idea of how many stitches you're gonna get out of each color because you've done a regular granny square and you can count your double crochets, but uh, I think it worked out quite well. I just put a regular shoulder strap on this one and this one I actually did a slip stitch back to make it even more sturdy and having it pull less because one thing you know with acrylic is the bag is going to stretch quite a bit so at least this way the handle's not stretching too too much and I think that will be a nice gift for someone. Any questions let me know. So on Mother's Day I gave mom her sweater and I got a clip here showing uh, how it looked the first time around. Hey everyone, just a little modeling from my mom on Mother's Day so you can see how version one was working out. And a little twirl and we're gonna fix it. Happy May the 13th. It's Monday, May the 13th today. And I have got this back. Yesterday was Mother's Day and I got to try it on the mom. And it was actually pretty good. I'm just gonna take the edging off and give it another try. Um, some of what I was talking about at the back with the sway and the openness, but also to maximize the yarn um, in terms of how it's hanging at the neck. Problem, if I build the neck up straight before adding it as part of the collar, um, it will give it enough length at the bottom. It'll transition to length at the bottom um, so that she won't be pulling it to get it to lie straight and i think that's it so i will have whatever extra i have because i don't need these many stitches around the, the base i'll be taking out a few stitches uh, and this little nugget here to finish her up the sleeves were perfect and overall it fits really good too so we will see how i do on edging take two back to regularly scheduled programming 
yeah so I was right the back was a bit wavy and I, th I think that's just the nature of how um, things fit on her particular body and then um, like I said she was really pulling on the neck because she wanted it higher on her so in order to have like a neck opening naturally in the fabric um, it creates a bit of a gap so usually I, I put a piece in there and then I do the whole color so this time I tried not doing it that way and obviously I needed to <laughs> so I took the whole trim off which was fine and then I um, did the neck first I fixed the neck and I'm gonna have to put some pictures on the screen because so when we went back over to drop to drop off version 2.0 um, we were chit chatting and stuff and hanging out and I made her that pump soap cover and I forgot to take the video I mentioned to her we got to take some a, a few clips or pictures at least and then we didn't do it so you're gonna take my word for it the pictures are on the screen of the new version but it fits her way way better it's not swaying at the back it's just hanging nicely um, there's enough in the front um, plenty in the front and um, once I was done the whole part that I needed to do the neck and then the whole um, trim everywhere and including the whole collar and down the front uh, I still had yarn left so I even put a couple extra tr trim rows of um, single crochets on the sleeve even though the sleeves were fine the first time around uh, so yeah done she's happy with it um, it's not her like that wouldn't be her color choice <laughs> it's the it's the yarn I had to do a summer wearable in that I thought would be very soft and drapey and she is very impressed with the fabric for sure so we'll see how we um, work her wardrobe around uh, that that salmony orange so that was the update on mom's cardi uh, so Carrie Penny the happy crafty homemaker has a tutorial for a shallow triangle shawl and that's what this is Again, scraps. So I have quite a bit of the navy blue before I call it scraps, or I did. But it started as a scrap. Um, it's the same yarn I used to make the navy blue granny square black. Hang on, before I go too much further, let's look at the clip. Hey everyone. I guess the shawl got me in a bit of a shawl mood and I got some inspiration because I just had a whole bunch of different uh, basic cotton scraps hanging around. The white is the rest of that chameleon yarn that I was making that hat for my mom out of. That is some Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie in the blue there. And you can see the Bernat Handicrafter Stripey in the colorway flannel. And I was feeling a summer shawl just for hanging around, like when the AC is on, not necessarily to go out in. And I didn't really know what was gonna happen. Let, give me a sec to fix it for you so I don't have to wobble you around so much. There it is. I'm following the tutorial by Carrie Penny, Happy Crafty Homemaker uh, for the shallow shawl, I think she called it, so that you don't end up with your point too deep before your sides get where you want them. And it's great, I love it. Just changes your increases slightly. And so I didn't really know what I was gonna do at the beginning. I didn't know how many colors I was gonna have in this. And then I just kind of settled with these three. Um, this is the um, one bag of of yarn that I've put away that I rescued or had Chris bring up for me. Um, it's all basically dishcloth cotton that was in there. And between that and what I had already had left out as scraps, I have been trying to get through some of it and make some bags and things like that. And I decided just to make the shawl. So I do have more of the blue. That is all the white, although that white is chameleon. So it's gonna turn to, I think, a purpley color. And then that is all of the stripey that's up here um, so I'm just going to see how big it gets with what I have. So it will probably end in blue and because I have more of that hanging around than anything else upstairs. Yeah, it's just something to stick over my shoulders if I'm a little chilly from the AC or anything like that. Not something I plan to wear out in the wild, just something to be kind of cozy on the couch with in the summertime because it's so breathable. And yeah, I am using a seven millimeter hook and that should be done for the end of the month or i guess for you guys now back to regularly scheduled programming okay so you got to see the yarns and now you saw the yarn um a full skein of the yarn anyway so here it is and the parts that look white again it's chameleon so they may turn purple in the um the sun but that's okay i'm also not so sure uh if anyone knows let me know in the comments what happens when you wash that yarn like does it continue to do that or does it go away eventually because I don't mind either way um, this is just something for me to throw over my shoulders on the couch and there it is what I'll do is at the end of the video I'll put a clip of me modeling the two shawls that are finished and that way you can see them 
in a better view than you can on screen. But this is so drapey, seven millimeter hook, and these yarns play a little bit less than a four weight. Of any of them, the um, stripey is the thickest. But just so you can see a little bit here, let's turn it around this way. Comes way down in the front, so we're good there. Tons of space. And just what I want for the couch, just to cover my shoulders if it's breezy or, you know, I've just got a little chill or something. And that's what inspired that. I just wanted to know the pattern, right? So she says in the pattern, once you understand the shaping, you can do what you want. So let's do what we want. I don't know if I have a clip of this one first. Let's check. Hello, everyone. So I am working on another shawl. This is also in Handicrafter Cotton, but this time I'm using one specific colorway. I got it on clearance from Spin Right years ago, and it's called Pepper Variegated. Um, and you could definitely agree that all those colors are in cracked pepper. <laughs> anyway, um, so the first one I did, I followed Carrie Penny's tutorial to the T. I didn't make any changes and I just did double crochets. So this time what I'm doing is I've created my own little pattern. And we start down here and every fourth row, I'm not doing the extra increase. Let's see if I can hold it for you. So the increase in Carrie Penny's um, tutorial is three double crochets in the first stitch or the last stitch each time. So for me, every fourth row, I'm only putting two. So I am modifying how quickly it builds in depth and length. <laughs> and I'm also being brave with some different stitches. So I did the open work here. And in the second row after, I just like putting the two stitches in the chain space so I don't have to fiddle with that extra stitch. And so I'm gonna do a little pattern next where I'm gonna actually do two double crochets in a stitch and skip a stitch. And then the next row, I'm gonna do the open work and then I'm gonna do this. So we'll have a, like a pattern of three instead of just one row and then back to some solid stitching and just continue from there. Uh, I have quite a bit of this yarn so I can literally make this shawl as big as I want. I could even make it big enough to then drape it in the front and turn it into a poncho. I'm just gonna see how long I feel like working on it. Um, I am in the boathouse. I think I, saw, I may have already showed some video on our little uh, vacay. And there's the hooks, and there is the water. I don't know if I can get it from this angle. Probably not, but there is a beautiful day. Can't quite manage those chairs that are outside, so I'm just sitting inside, but it's equally beautiful. Okay, back to our regular scheduled programming. Presto changeo. <laughs> I love this yarn and I love the way that this shawl worked up. Um, this is not nearly as soft and drapey as the one you just saw. However, I know what's going to happen to this. Um, I made a cat blanket from one skein of handicraft or cotton. Gosh, it's got to be 10 years ago. It was long before I found YouTube and it was 2017 when I found uh, YouTube in terms of crochet. Um, and I think I just half double crocheted the whole thing and that uh, I used an entire, I think it's 384 grams of a big handicrafter to make a slightly rectangular cat blanket for the bed. And then I trimmed it in like a solid color or something, maybe just single crochet. It's very, very simple. Um, so we had three cats at the time. <laughs> So it was well used, it was well washed and laundered, and I always feel like touching that compared to touching something that's freshly made in Handicrafter is night and day. So the moral of the story is you gotta give Handicrafter a chance once it's laundered. Uh, and that is the reason why, I'll pop up a picture here, I was fine to use this Handicrafter that I found on clearance at Lens Mills years ago to make a king size blanket. Who would, who would think to make a king size blanket at a Handicrafter cotton? And for those in the US, it's peaches and cream, the ones that come in the cones, or lily sugar and cream, the ones that come in those little cakes, it's all the same yarn. It is the cotton yarn branded two different ways that is produced by Spinrite, so you'll find it on Yarnspiration under both um, labels. And in the US, you mostly get peaches and cream or lily sugar and cream, and here we mostly get Bernat Handicrafter cotton. Same stuff, right? That, that you know, trusty dishcloth cotton, as we all like to call it. Um, anyway, the point is when you make something out of it fresh, it feels rough and it does feel rough when you're working with it a little bit too, but once you wash and dry it, um, it, you know, understand that it's going to shrink its cotton. But aside from that, the way it launders, it's, 
it's it holds up very 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 well it's sort of an out of necessity issue for here in Canada because we don't have access to all these different cottons um, easily and this came from Spinrite so this was on clearance and it's called pepper variegated I think I mentioned already so I got a bunch of them and now that I made this I think I'm gonna try to make more of a there's a pattern from your inspirations that I've been thinking of trying for years and it is a hoodie and it's I think it's even made out of that handicrafter cotton I'd have to go back and check but anyway I don't want the hood part but I wouldn't mind a um, wearable with this cotton and I think I still have enough so what I did with this one we'll switch it around now um, I used one full skein of the handicrafter cotton of the large skeins oh my goodness I forgot it's right here <laughs> I brought one out for you uh, when Spinrite is doing their tent sales, they do buy three, get one free. So I think I ended up with eight of these and I think I still have maybe four, including this one. Um, so yeah, so it's a really nice yarn and I like how it looks, which now that I know how it looks, just basically using double crochet back and forth, um, I would really like to make a wearable. So it's interesting how it pooled and things like that because the stitches are different. So getting back to Carrie Penny's tutorial, now that I made the first one following the rules, I made this one my own way. Um, so some of the ends got um, the regular three stitches, some got only two in the uh, point. Sometimes I was doing double crochet, one double crochet with two chains, some one double crochet with one chain. Sometimes I was putting two double crochets and then throughout I did some open work, which I, I think was easier for you to see that on the video than it would be here. Um, but I'm really pleased with how it turned out and the shape of it. Um, it's allowing for it to not grow too deep before it's the width that I want it to be. And like I said, I'll try to do a stand up show of it so you can see the whole thing. Um, but I used a seven millimeter hook on this one as well. So uh, I think that's good enough for right now. If you have any questions, let me know. I feel like I'm babbling about this one a bit too much. <laughs> so I know I had a clip of this, so let's have a look. Hey everyone, just another quick little video about this bag I am making based on inspiration from Jada's uh, current May um, cowl, which is a wall hanging, and I thought I'd make a bag instead. And I'm starting to add some things to it, so I guess the newest thing, I guess the newest thing is the strap, so I took some inspiration from how she did her border. And I made a strap. I wanted to pull in this teal that's at the very bottom, coming into the sky and then all the way around the strap. And then I also used some green and then I edged it a little bit with the flower idea or the petal border that she had going just by the bag itself because I figure it's gonna probably be a crossbody bag. And um, that way whoever's wearing it won't have any interference other than the strap for the part that's up there. And then I just started playing with some appliques. Uh, I was watching a live today. Today is Thursday, May the 16th. And I was watching the live today while I was actually also watching a tutorial for that ladybug. And um, I'm not gonna get any closer on that ladybug because it's very, it's not very good. I was trying to make it smaller. So I was trying to uh, go rogue and it did not work out. So I'm gonna try again. I might actually try with thread for some of the stuff that go on here. Hello everyone. Just a little uh, snapshot of my view from the bed in our hotel room. We're away right now and I am working on some appliques for my bag. And I just wanted to point out that I have this yarn from Dollarama in Ontario, Canada. I'm not sure how far Dollarama goes around Canada, but these are adorable. There's so many different colors in them. I want to point out that there's cotton and acrylic and this one is not labeled correctly so it's a good idea to really have a look at the packages one of the packages has more of a green label and this is purple and i was used to seeing that from the original two my mom got me so i just gambled by looking carefully through the package and there is like a little hole you can kind of touch the yarn um that this would be the cotton and it was and i specifically wanted it for ladybug colors and then whatever else i might get up to for the applique for my bag but uh you know like for all these different little colors this is basically fingering weight yarn i'm saying that based on the fact of the shawl that i just made because it seems that thin um and i was just using this little guy here um and i've got the body done and i'm about to start going on to the black bits of the 
applique and Jada just did a surprise live today. It is, what would the date be today? It's Wednesday, I believe. So if, yeah, so it's Wednesday, May the 22nd today and hubby is out exploring Blue Mountain Village and I am working on some appliques. But yeah, this yarn isn't the, um, this yarn is a, a good idea if you just need a little bit of colors for something. And if you need it to be thicker, you can always hold it double or triple. <laughs> anyway, back to our regularly scheduled programming. And for my son, I just decided to do the brightest yellow to the gold to the orange vibe. And I just decided to pick up the color of the flowers, made a couple flowers and made a tree. Nothing is sewn down. You can see I've started some other pieces here. There's another potential tree trunk there and a couple of centers. I'm definitely going to be adding some daisies to this. So those are probably the centers for the daisies. And uh, I see a butterfly and maybe a dragonfly in my future. Appliques are definitely not my strong suit. Um, but I liked the idea of a fun summer spring bag. So nothing else has happened to this. It is still the way it was when you last saw it on camera and the appliques are inside. <laughs> I have made a couple more little ones. So the funny thing about the ladybug part from being away and wanting to get the yarn to be able to make the ladybug smaller, uh, I can't find the ladybug. <laughs> it's like it didn't make it home from vacation. Anyway, in the meantime, I made a couple other flowers um, with the cotton I picked up from Dollarama. Um, and it just takes me so long. They're fine. It's my version of a poppy, because why not? And then another little purple flower with a red center. Um, so anyway, um, I'm going to take my time. I might try to focus on it um, a little bit during Jada's Monday Lives just to give me a time to target to get to to make sure I work on it. Um, the one thing about this bag that will keep me a little bit motivated is the girl that I have it in mind for will really like it because she's a, a big fan of the art aspect of crochet. So um, and she'll get a huge kick out of me telling her it's one of a kind because let me tell you right now I'm never doing it again. <laughs> I'm proud of myself for doing it, but the overall experience, I don't like when crochet becomes tedious and this project is becoming very tedious for me. So um, that's just how I am, right? We can, all, we can both love things and not love them at the same time and that's cool for me. Uh, there was a good learning curve with this and uh, overall, I'm gonna be thrilled with it when it's done. I'm just taking my time. <laughs> so blanket done, thank goodness. Um, so I made this C to C with a six millimeter hook. This was another little bit of a love-hate relationship. This yarn is amazing. Look at it, it's so pretty. I'll fold her over. Um, but she's so thin. And I told you in the clip that it's more of a mandala weight yarn. But then when I went to use the white for the border, I'm like, why is this all of a sudden like rippling on me? Well, the white is like a true three weight, I guess. And then the, um variegated was just lighter so just went down a hook size i let it do its thing for the first couple of rounds and then i just um what i ended up doing was doing some cluster stitches on the border to take out some of the um stitches without taking out stitches without leaving gaps let's put it that way so i had fun with it especially the border part once it was done and i didn't measure it so if i do it before i while i edit um i'll put it on the screen here um, but yeah, happy to have this one done. So all my yarn is packed up because we are on the hunt for a new house. That is not going very well, but that's beside the point. So my yarn's hiding. Most of it's hiding in the basement and I don't go down to the basement because it's really hard on my knees to do stairs. So I had to get some yarn back. <laughs> First, I got the Handicrafter bag, which was all my huge skeins of Handicrafter and um, a few other things were in there. And then the second bag was all like miscellaneous, tiny cottons, uh, there's shawl and ball in there and just different ice yarns I had got that were pr primarily cotton over the years. Um, what I've got some softy baby cotton in there. Um, <laughs> so anyway, there's a couple of things I've taken out of bag two um, that I will hopefully make use of working on this time of year when it's gonna be warmer and warmer out. But what I did find in there was a bag of scraps. And all these little guys here 
we're in it. So literally I started with the smallest scrap and have been progressively working my way through them based on the size of the balls they were. Um, now the purple, I had a little nugget of, so that is why I, I worked it in now because everybody is kind of getting to be a similar size now. Um, the white being the smallest, but I'll explain the white after. So see, we got the, these to go through, but it's primarily um, these pinky salmony tones that are left right now, aside from the purple. And then this is a cream, so that's gonna nice, be nice to break it up. Like, look, look how little there was left, still attached to something else here. Look how tiny amount there was left of that teal -y color I used already. So I'm very happy with that. Um, and then there's this, what appears to be white. I still think it is a shot, it, it is a Karen cake, but it might've been just like a plain cream one. So this is coming from a variegated yarn. So it's got a little bit of speckling in it, which is fine with me. And I think it's gonna break this up nicely, especially cause there's this lighter green color at the top here. Um, but the shawl is kind of in tandem with project number two. In case you didn't figure this out, we're on whips now. <laughs> anyway, so I'm making a ripple blanket just for me for the couch. There's a clip of this, let's have a look. Good morning, everybody. Today is Monday, May the 27th, and we are days away from me recording my May podcast, and I'm starting a new project. Um, I got hubby to pull out another bag of yarn that had gone to sit in storage um, because I was, I felt like I didn't have enough of my summer stuff up, and it was a mixed bag, so it did not have all of my cotton cakes, but it had a few. So I'm going to pop up a picture here. I started a shawl with all scraps. And then I have these three full cakes. So this one is kind of a plain color. That one seems to have it in it. Um, I'm not so sure how yellow that is. I think that looks more cream in real life. And then this has got grays and creamy hues, not as white as it's looking there. And then I also have this gray, which is more like a marled. And then this brownie, beigey, creamy one. Um, which may or may not be part of the shawl. And any scraps of all of these could end up in the shawl as well. But in order to know what's gonna be truly scraps, I have to start the blanket first. All I want is a little throw for the couch for summertime. Um, I noticed that I need the fan on in here a lot just to keep the air moving around. But sometimes when it's on, I just want a little something something to grab. And I'm sure once the AC actually has to be on, it'll even come in handy when, when that's running. But uh, I thought, why not? So I think I'm gonna use that as kind of my um, in-between and then maybe go back and forth uh, between those two um, variegated or, or striped cakes um, and see how it goes. Uh, well, it'll be interesting to see how far three gets me because it's just a throw. I just basically need it as wide as my lap and as long as I want it. So I think I have plenty of yarn and I'm just not sure if I need to pull in those other two scraps or not. So we will see. Still Monday, it's Jada's Monday Live. She's working on her wall hanging. I am back on this blanket thing that I've been working on. I decided to go with a soft ripple and the uh, tutorials right there from Play Hooky with me. Um, and I just wanna show you what I always do. I don't count my foundation chains unless I absolutely have to. And at the end of the width that I want, I add on whatever the stitch multiplier is. And in this case, it was a 12 plus stitch multiplier. So I think it was a 12 plus three at the end. So when I was happy with the width of my chains, I wanted this to drape over my lap um, when I'm sitting on the couch. And so I let it be wide enough that it's covering my legs on both sides. And when it was there, I added another 12 stitches plus three, which was the stitch multiplier for this pattern because that way I have to have enough stitches. And this is where I was supposed to end a dip, three double crochets and then two in the final stitch. And I'm just about to undo my little knot here and take out these extra chains. And that's how I do my, my foundation chains whenever possible. If I don't have to count, I'm not gonna count. And now my pattern will be fine. And I'm loving um, how the Karen cotton cake is working up with my six millimeter hook, nice and drapey. Back to regularly scheduled programming. So here is my pattern. 
We start at the bottom with the salmon -y tone and this gray variegated back to the salmon and we've done one round of the driftwood. Um, and it's it's wide, like it's it's a decent width. So it's not quite going on camera so that it's draping over me, right? And um, if you want to count it in ripples, let's do that quickly. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So there's 11 full peaks across. And then of course the sides end on a half peak and the tutorial is linked below. After working with so much of the Handicrafter for um, the month of May, this feels so soft now, but it's also different soft. It's not acrylic soft. There's still something about the Karen Cakes that are interesting feeling to me. Um, and, and for the most part, these are probably very different generations. I know this one is the oldest, um, but I, and it actually might feel the nicest. But anyway, um, I was glad they were in there because it inspired me to make them work for a project. And the reason the gray is here, because obviously those colors go well um, together on their own, is just because there's a lot of gray in my room here. So, and that's not gonna change when we move because our furniture is gonna come with us. So I figured I'd get the gray in. So the solid color will go back in next for two rows. So it's, it's um, I don't think I said this. It's two rows, then four rows, then two rows, then four rows, and then it'll be two rows again. So it should work out that the cakes are getting used pretty evenly. This one goes well enough with this that I can put it in just to finish up a row if I need to. So it's just a little bit of strategy. And with this one and this one, I can make use of it if I'm in the browns, right? So we'll see how it works out, um, but yeah. The only time the pattern might start to look a little bit odd is when it actually hits the color. Um, they're not exactly the same, but they're so close. So you, yeah, it's showing better on camera than it does in real life. So the one in the striped cake is more a richer tone. This is a more denim -y tone, but in real life, I mean, it's much harder to tell than it is on camera. So you got to see, yay. <laughs> anyway, it's basically, it's a stash blanket. It's not a scrap blanket, it's a stash blanket but it's not like a carefully planned out project. <laughs> it's just using what I have access to. So, and it's making me happy. I've never made a ripple for me. I've actually only made one ripple. I've made a bunch of granny ripples, but the regular ripples, usually they give me a lot of pause because of the counting. Anyway, I'm happy with this. I got to do my salmon -y tone next and we'll see how, how much length I can get out of um, these. I have the option of pulling as much or as little as this of this in. It's even interesting side to side. So this is how it looks on the one side of the cake and this is how it looks on the other. The only color I'm not really interested in having in the blanket from here is the very light creamy white. So that should end up in the shawl. And going back to the shawl, any scraps I have left over from the blanket will make it into the shawl. So that is how the dual Karen cotton cake project is going to uh, work out hopefully in the month of June. <laughs> So I am using a seven millimeter hook on this one and a six and a half millimeter hook on this one. So plans for June. There's one more bag I wanna make and I know the yarn I'm gonna use for it. And I'd like to do a wearable for myself in the month of June. I will see if I can figure out the sleeve thing I wanna do. And a bit on a shawl kick and a bag kick and we will see what June brings. <laughs> um, I'll put a couple of clips at the end and um, thanks for hanging out with me. Have a great day. Happy crochet. Bye everybody.